welcome to the last vlog of 2021. I guess it makes the most sense to start in January. So January 1st, me, Spencer, and Will are, we're still living in Seattle and getting ready to move out, go to Albuquerque for uh, the Beast Altitude Camp. And at this point, I'm still, my plan for 2021 is still just to run. I had spoken with USA Triathlon at this point. I was going to sort of start swimming, or at least sort of swimming instruction, but I still really had my, my heart set on being a runner, and I thought that I had to put everything towards being a runner to be successful at it, so I wasn't really thinking about triathlon at this point. We get there, and uh, shit, I don't even know how to really word this. Um, five days in, my sister dies of a fentanyl overdose, and uh, that completely changed the course of everything. Uh, absolutely everything. You know, I was still working full time at this point, and then I took some time off from work, obviously. And then during that time off, when I was just running and biking, uh, I decided I was not going to go back to work, and I was just going to figure out a way to make it work. And I had sort of started swimming at this point. It was hard because of COVID, uh, pool restrictions. There weren't. It was hard to get a lane, it was hard to even get to the pool. I didn't really know what my plan was at this point. I was just 100% sure I didn't want to be working that job and I wanted to just be exercising all day. I did that for a little bit, uh, making YouTube videos, running in Albuquerque, getting in altitude training, building up for this 5K, and uh... around this time, <clears throat> In Tucson, Arizona, Talbot Cox, Corey Belmore, and Lionel Sanders were all sitting on the couch watching YouTube after dinner and stumbled across my channel. And both Talbot and Corey DM'd me. Talbot asked uh, how much for the beats, and I said, free if you want to collab. And Corey said, come to Tucson anytime. Uh, come train. And so, um... And, and coincidentally, uh, we terminated our lease in Seattle because they wouldn't let us extend it. So it was gonna run out like right when we got back after Albuquerque. So we didn't have a place to go back to. And I decided I was just gonna go to Tucson, start swimming every day and really, really do triathlon. Um, I'd had, you know, half an eye on it, but this is when I decided I was gonna, I was gonna do it. Um, but anyway, I finished up the Albuquerque training block. Johnny and I drove to Austin, had a great time, ran the 5K, ran 14.06, which, whatever. That was off of like 30 miles a week at that point and a bunch of biking, so not bad. And then uh, I was going to get a burrito one night and I crashed my car. All right, good swim. Uh, a bunch of 300s, 200s, 100s. Anyway, crashed my car, camped out in Zilker Park in Austin for the next three nights with Johnny. Slept in a hammock, camped out at coffee shops during the day. And, uh, then eventually, they told me it was gonna be three weeks before my car would be fixed. So we drove in Johnny's van to Tucson. That's where the year really feels like it started. So it was also right at this time that I got to Tucson that I uh, started the plant-based diet. And also, I totally forgot that um, also January, Jesse and I drove 24 hours round trip from Albuquerque to LA to pick this man up. So Tucson for the next uh, two and a half months, I was training all three disciplines, doing two workouts a week with Lionel, 
uh, swimming with him, or rather swimming in the same pool as him at Aqua Bear, and really just fell in love with the sport. Did my first triathlon at Bartlett Lake. Lionel lent me basically all of his stuff to do. So that that was pretty awesome and uh, got the dub. So that was even more awesome. And uh, Johnny and I were just making videos and then Nolan came and we were all just having a good time. Uh, but eventually I decided that uh, having fun wasn't enough. And uh, that's why I moved back across the country to New Hampshire to go train with uh, my current coach, James Peterson and his team JP Elite to essentially have what, you know, looking back on it now was like a six month intensive swim camp where, you know, every day was just all about improving my stroke and, and really learning about swimming, learning how to swim well. Went to New Hampshire, did that, uh, met some, uh, some great guys who were my roommates in a two bedroom apartment with four people. It was tight quarters, but it was a lot of fun. I'm gonna interrupt the uh, the 2021 review for my first bike workout of the season, which I have uh, 10.6421 with equal rest, kind of just by feel. Introductory session to remind the legs what it's like to push some watts. Holy crap, getting back in shape is tough. Oh, started at around 3.30 for the 10 minutes and uh, got up to like 3.40 by the two minutes. Heart rate actually wasn't that high. It was uh, like 145 on the 10 minute and kind of slowly crept up a little bit above 150 as the workout went on. But yeah, it is going to be a battle to get back in shape. But anyway, where was I? Went to New Hampshire, learning how to swim. Did two more local triathlons, just building up to age group nats mostly, where I got third and got my pro card. Took it immediately so I could get into the pro field at Maine for my first 70.3. All right, well, it's tomorrow and it snowed. Really hope the pool's open. Pro debut, 70.3 Maine, got f Last pro out of the water. Uh, 305 normalized on the bike and a 109 run. Course may have been <clears throat> 100 meters short or something. I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, I basically holed up and trained for three more months for Indian Wells with the hopes of getting a little bit less, which I think I did. Um, not last out of the water, more watts on the bike, faster speed. Nutritional issue on the run, so I was pretty slow. Both Maine and Indian Wells had such sick videos, and Indian Wells specifically, I mean, look at these, look at these shots. That's Johnny and Alex Andre, and shout out to Alex, he just showed up on a dime, like the day before, was like, hey man, can I help film? We were like, yeah. So, um, check out his other stuff, he's doing a documentary on, uh, the state of track and field, in the U.S., but I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to link that here. So go check him out. He's a phenomenal filmmaker, and obviously Johnny. You guys know. This entire time, uh, I have been supporting myself off of YouTube ad revenue and Patreon. Uh, basically, your guys' generosity allowing me to do this, being a professional triathlete for the bulk of 2021. Thank you guys for helping make this dream a reality. It truly has been the craziest year of my life. Again, thank you to City Bicycle Company for lending me the disc wheel for Indian Wells and Aguila, Aguila Performance Coaching, if you need a coach, by the way. Aguila for lending me the bike box because I didn't, I didn't share this because I just didn't make it into the video, but here's a clip from before Indian Wells. It looks like we're starting the Indian Wells video with me having an absolute Breakdown. Shout out City Bicycle Company for the disc wheel, by the way. Some of the bearings in the steerer tube seem sort of stuck up there and they won't go back down there. So I have approximately 24 hours to figure this out. Kind of freaking out a little bit. And uh, yeah, basically just almost ruined my bike trying to fit it into my mom's old bike box and Aguila totally saved me and the guys at Trek bike shop for actually like putting my bike back together that was that was a scary moment honestly i'm just i'm just very grateful for everybody that has helped make this year possible just getting started definitely just getting started if we think about the fact that i started this sport 10 months ago 
I basically uh, am a one month old baby. I was in the womb, in the triathlon womb for nine months, and now I'm a month old, so damn, just y'all wait till I'm a toddler. It's 25 degrees out, I just ran. Got a 90 minute trainer ride. But uh, anyway, yeah, that was my 2021 in review. Obviously there's a lot of videos that cover it more in depth, but actually someone DM'd me asking me to bring back, they said they were watching old videos of mine and I used to do a Q&A at the end of them and uh, asked me to bring it back. So if you have any more questions about 2021 or in general, uh, shoot them down in the comments and I'll do another Q&A at the end of my next video, whenever that is. I'm gonna try to think of three things that I learned this year. Three things that I learned this year. Number one, I should probably just stop reading YouTube comments. I mean like 95% of everyone who comments is really nice. Feels like they legitimately want me to succeed. Honestly, I mean I wouldn't be here without the help of this community uh, basically allowing to, to, to make this financially possible. Man, there are just some assholes on there. Number two, really interesting bit of uh, information that I only learned because of my uh, dual-sided Favero Asioma pedals is that we, we know that the bike fit on a time trial bike is very important as far as aerodynamics and it, it's very common that people in a really aggressive position on a time trial bike will lose power but when I went from my uh, original titanium road bike to the new carbon Scott frame with SRAM and, and all of that, the fit was just slightly off that I was losing a crazy amount of power. And for a while, I didn't know why that was. And uh, thanks to the pedals and the data they provide, I can look at the, the right left balance. So here's data from a workout on my road bike and on my time trial bike. They're both the exact same workout. The main thing is that, well, one, I have a ton more power on my time trial bike, you know, in, an, in uh, I don't have the most aggressive position, but in the time trial position where commonly you'd expect less power than on my road bike. And the interesting thing is I have a perfect 50-50 right-left split on my time trial bike and my road bike is like consistently 36, 64, like crazy, crazy uh, offset, totally not even power. And uh, that kind of just tells me that whatever way I'm sitting on the bike is forcing muscles that aren't as strong uh, or aren't as evenly balanced to be doing a larger share of the work instead of, I'm assuming, you know, my quads or, or glutes, whatever, like, you know, big muscles that are meant to be pushing power. So I'm, I'm really happy to have partnered with Favero to, I mean, basically uncover bits of information like that. And uh, really, it's just a, it's a great power meter. I don't have a discount code, but I'll ask them in 2022, if any of you guys are looking for power meter, single-sided or dual-sided, um, I think that's, that's the best one out there for the vast majority of people. Yeah, if you're looking for a power meter, Hopefully I'll be able to get you guys a discount in 2022. Number three, I know I posted a video about how uh, I started sucking at running as I transitioned into triathlon. And like right after I posted that video, I started running really well. Uh, I wasn't running fast, like in college, you know, when you're training for a 5K or a 10K, that's really fast, it's significantly under threshold. You're doing a lot of VO2 max work, you're running 60 second pace a lot, you know, a lot of 200s, a lot of just really hard, fast running. And there's no other fatigue to bog your legs down. What I did notice is that I was having some of the best and easiest long runs that I have ever had. You know, I thought I was pretty good at you know, running a good hard long run in college, but I have never been able to just average 540 pace on the long run as easily as I can now, or as I was at the end of last season. So my sort of aerobic strength and my ability to run under threshold, but you know, a, a relatively high percentage of threshold for a really long time is better than it ever has been. And you know, I credit that with just the overall aerobic development of triathlon training and you know, going 20, 25 hours a week instead of 10 in pure distance running. So am I gonna run, you know, 401 or in the mile, 751 in the 3K? I, I may never be in that sort of fitness again, but could probably down the line run a really, really good marathon. Hopefully a good marathon off the bike upcoming. Thank you guys for watching along on this video and 
2021 as a whole, it truly has been the craziest year of my life. I hope I move around a little bit less in 2022, but I'm out here living my dream and there's really nothing more I can ask for. So thank you guys for making it possible and coming along for this whole journey. Um, I guess final note is Beat Tape Volume 2, Devil Sessions Volume 2 is set to release on January 1st, which if this goes as planned is tomorrow. So go stream that, Apple Music, Spotify, all major streaming platforms. And uh, thank you Pedro Canario for the album art and the sweet logo. Hopefully we'll have some merch of that coming soon. But uh, peace out guys. Have a good 2022.